Yeah, welcome back. Time to pick your thoughts on the various issues we put on our, our social media sites. And joining me is the ever lovely Aisha. Arafa, I love your <laughs> dress. Seriously, after here, you just give it to me. I'll just go and do some more treating. No problem. Arafa, sister, thank you, right? No problem at all. <laughs> and the ongoing ministerial vetting is definitely making headlines. And most Ghanaians seem to be following the process with keen interest. The nominees are explaining why they should be approved to serve as ministers of state. I'm sure you have been monitoring and you have some observations about this procedure. So which of the nominees has impressed you so far in the ongoing vetting process? Remember, it's on facebook.com slash join news on TV and on Twitter is on join news on TV. Chamatin, who is also known as Adam Cash. Yeah, it is because uh, he is once a minister for the uh, presidential special initiative in the Kufo regime. And you see, he's been answering all the questions that was imposed to him very perfectly. And then I guess all the committee members were also impressed about his answers. I leave my mama, yeah. She, she seems to uh, have knowledge about the work that has been uh, confined on, on her. And the level of education, the constitution seems to be okay. And she looks more poised to deliver when she is given the opportunity to serve the country. So to me, she has so far impressed me so well. Uh, for me, like the Black Star team, almost any one of them is competent in their field. Because most of them are veteran politicians. And I don't think they will choose a, a wrong figure for the, his appointment. I don't think so. I, I hope all of them will do well for the nation. Okay. Actually, what I observe is like the minority side seems to be more at the offensive, and then the majority seems more of the defensive side. That's what I really dislike about the, the committee that I've been set up. So, to me, I've not raised any controversial. The controversial issue is like uh, the campaign. Still, the campaign majority is still is still among the panel. Rather, we should look at how best we can form a committee of uh, expertise, whereby people in the same like-minded uh, vet people who are given a specific position. Some questions are like um, they want to give a dog a bad name to be able to hang it, you see. But to me, I know all of them are competent in their field. Um, I think so far, um, um, the senior minister nominee uh, Masafu Mafu and then um, Bwachi Jako, uh, the two of them so far. Well, I think on both occasions, the two of them, the way they answered um, the questions thrown at them, the way, I mean, they constructed their answers, um, the manner in which they spoke, I mean, they spoke with authority. You could see that um, they knew exactly what um, they were talking about. So I think um, on both occasions, the two of them. Uh, so far, the education minister, uh, he has done so well, uh, even though I wasn't uh, expecting him, I didn't expect that he would do the way he has done, but he has, among all of them, he has done so well. Well, 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 those were some interesting comments from the streets. Let's see what you've been saying also on Facebook. Araba. Well, on Facebook, Kwesi Boating Ayipa writes, Oya Adie Ye Yao Safo Mafo. He was ace of vetting. He was rather vetting the panel, educating them, and reframing the question for them. So that's from Kwesi Ayipa. My mate Jean Gerada says, The tallest standing amongst them so far is Mr. Keno Furiata, who is the finance minister designate. Followed by Mr. Boache Jako, uh, the energy minister designate, performance wise. But Mr. Jako's vetting was the most enjoyable. And senior Titus also answers says, energy minister Ejako Boache. Uh, he is just amazing. A banker teaching others about energy transmission. Honorable Muntaka and Honorable Haruna wanted to make it difficult, but he just gave them a lecture. <laughs> now Moses uh, Aglina says, Boache Jako so far. For today, their great minister designates is also not doing bad. Imoro Sumaila says, the finance minister designate uh, Ken Operata, he says, in fact, I was so impressed by his responses. And Robert Loud, uh, Watchman says, Mr. Boache Jako, Yao Safo Mafo, Ken Operata, Akutose, 
I think you mean uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Owusu-Efri oh. Yakuto yeah. and Hajia Mahama in that order. Okay, and Napoleon Lutri says the chairman is being biased. He doesn't want the minority to flow when it comes to critical issues. Adama China says none of them so far, except you don't want to tell the truth. Okay, I don't know who you're <laughs> pointing that at. Maxwell or Hineba Preku says Boche Jako. Uh, there seems he seems to know what he is about, and Ajima Menu he was comfortable in answering the questions. The Medet Simon says I didn't get time to listen to all those vetted so far, but with the few I listened to, I can say Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, and those were some of your messages on Facebook. Also, South African celebrity Somize Nglongo stormed out of church last Sunday when Ghanaian pastor Dark Hayward Mills spoke against homosexuality. Pastor Dark Hayward Mills, who was a visiting pastor at the Grace Bible Church in South Africa, in a sermon described homosexuality as unnatural, adding, even animals of same sex do not have sexual relations with each other. Nglongo, who is gay himself, later expressed his displeasure on Instagram, saying the pastor should just take it open that homosexuals are not allowed in the church, so they find another one which will accept them. For him working out, I mean, for me, it, because the guy, the man, the preacher man also has a right to preach. So how does he feel about it? I mean, the whole issue, this gay issue. So if he's preaching and he's saying it's not right, and he, you, you, you are gay. I mean, you all have different opinions. So the guy, if you can just sit down, listen, and, and go. There's no need, I mean, uh, working out on, 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 on the man. That was right by doing his, his job. And if, if he is gay and he will not change, uh, I, 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 the question is, what, what is he doing in church in any way? Because um, as a gay, you are going against the Bible, so you're not supposed to be there. For me, I would say it's a personal decision whether he should stay or he should walk out. But walking out from church, it's a little bit questionable. So why do you go to church in the first place? Because the church is there to correct, to educate, and to inform people, right? So if you are gay and pastor has come to uh, talk against it, for me, like you, because what you are doing is wrong, so your conscience is breaking you. If, you, uh, if what you are doing is right, then if your conscience will not freak you. So for me, that's how I see it. Absolutely wrong. Imagine if everybody decides to be gay. Who will give birth for someone for you to also have a partner? So it's, excuse for my word, it's silly. It doesn't make sense. You see, if you are mentally stable, you won't do that in the first place. All those who are actually in this gay gay thing, I think they need they need help. One here is right, because the Bible does say judge and you shall not be judged, and you without sin cast the first stone. So if you think you're better than anybody, then why the hell do you need Christ? Do you get say Christ accepts you for who you are, and you're here on earth as a human being, judging other human beings, when Christ judged not? He welcomes everybody, open arms. You're a sinner, you're a fornicator, whatever you are, Christ is accepting you. So who are you to judge somebody Christ has accepted when you say you're working for the man who has accepted the people you are judging. Doesn't make sense. Interesting comments. Let's see what you've been saying on Facebook. Well, Bright Nanayo Tim Timafo Arthur, I hope I got that right. He says, very soon I'm robbers, adulteress, <laughs> sorceress. We'll all be in church and we'll be offended if the man of God preaches against them. Bishop Dag is not afraid of the truth. The word of God is truth. And Ernest uh, Ayesu Senior says, the church preaches based on the Bible. So then, if preachers, if he preaches against the practice that the Bible abhors, what's the beef here? And that's my argument, uh, yeah, of course. Aisha. I guess we've allowed these human rights uh, too much space, and it's gradually eating the morals of society up. I agree with you there, Ernest. Napoleon Lotri says, some of the so-called men of God are just in for the money, so they fear to say the truth because they might lose numbers. And the media, Simon says, hmm, some of the activities of some pastors, the least talked about them, the better. What actually worries us is the gullibility of majority of our brethren. Avevo Hope says, the Bible warns no sinners will inherit or will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whatever the sin is in our lives, the Bible promises God will forgive us if we ask and are willing to repent. Nana Kovina Trump says, preach about what? Is it not the word of God? 
So if the Bible abhors gay marriage, shouldn't I say it? We will choose to obey God rather than human rights. That's Roman 1 verse 24. He oh. says downwards. All right. So those are some of the messages on Facebook. And finally, what I'm about to say is very interesting. And I would need you to tell me what you would do if you ever found yourself in this situation. So, all right. So, I mean, hypothetically, you have just come back from work and you see six rats in your room. The first is chewing your highest academic certificate, maybe your degree certificate. The second is chewing your ATM card. And the third rat is chewing your marriage certificate, while the fourth is chewing your London house ownership document. Imagine what the fifth rat is doing. The fifth rat is chewing your visa to travel to a multi-billion dollar project. And the sixth is chewing your Bible or Quran. Tell me which one you wouldn't think twice before killing first. <laughs> I'll kill a Satan. The one chewing my Bible. Yeah. Because my Bible is more important to me than every other thing. It, it means a lot, but you know, God first. That's the word of God, and I won't throw it away. I'll kill the one chewing my ATM card, which I don't have one now. But if I should have, I'll have a whole lot of money on it. So I'll choose the ATM card. I'll kill that rat. Then use the money from my ATM card to buy the Bibles and those stuff. So, Of course, um, the first thing that you do is the one chewing your Bible because, yeah, God first. But then I know people watching will be like, ah, get away, pam. But then, you know, everything you have to say God first. So the Bible is more important. And if it hadn't been the Bible, I would have chosen the one chewing my um, one with the highest degree or certificate something. Yeah, I think that one would be important to me too. Uh, the multi-million project, I'll, I'll, I'll kill that one first because, uh, because you know, definitely when I get the, the visa is my the key to the multi-million project. So if I don't kill that one, I will miss the multi-million. I will miss the money. That is the money is the key. Money is key to everything. How about your ATM? The ATM, ATM, not so hard, but then. ATM, what if there's no money in it? The multi-million, no? I want the millions. I want millions of Ghana cities. So I will, billions. Sister, I will kill the billion. I will kill the, the rat eating the visa for the billions. Please, I will kill it very, 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 very. What would you do if you find yourself in this situation? Imagine those things were not replaceable. If it was not replaceable, honestly, I would kill the one eating my rat. I mean, opportunities always come. And I believe that, you know, the multimillion one sounds very, very, very <laughs> juicy. But, you know, but with God, all things are possible. If, so. if, you, if, you, miss, if you get all the multimillion dollar project, you miss heaven, what would you do? Uh, <laughs> I'll think. go straight to hell. I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a lot of responses coming in from Facebook. And uh, uh, Aisha, can you read this one? What's his name? He's written in Arabic. I certainly don't know what he's trying to <laughs> But he's saying, I will kill the one eating my visa first. It seems a lot of people are being honest here. <laughs> and he says, my reason being that I can always get all the other documents at no, at no cost. But for the visa, I'll have to incur huge financial costs. And Philip uh, Odum says, imagine you want to divorce your wife and you have baseless facts to table the divorce before the law court. At the same time, you want to kill all these rats. You direct all the rats to the marriage certificate and live there <laughs> and they will want for themselves. <laughs> so um, that is from Philip Kojo. Okay. Um, those are some of the messages. Uh, this one is from who? Okay. Nanama Afrakuma Todd Hunter says, first of all, the fifth one, can replace all of them if I'm able to protect the visa for the multi-billion project. Why not? I'll <laughs> kill the fifth one. Nora, a uh, uh, says, when there is a fire outbreak, it's not you who determine what to pick, but rather anything that your hand touches. Prince Nuruddin Baumia says, as a religious person, the fifth will be my target, but know that in the hereafter, you have to tell your Lord why you killed it. Clemens Kuku says, I would kill the fifth rat because with money, I can get back all of their duplicates. Those are some of your comments on Facebook. Let's see.